Do you think it's possible to use this tiny DJI Osmo Pocket camera to capture sharp stars or nighttime lapses? Let's discover this together in this video. Hey, it's Future Me here. I wanted to say that I originally filmed the video using the DJI Osmo Pocket, but DJI since has released a new version, the DJI Pocket 2, with a bigger sensor and a wider lens, so we should be getting better pictures of the stars. And Freewell also sent me a light pollution filter, so I'm gonna review both of them at the end of this video. It doesn't change the content about the Osmo Pocket, it's still 100% valid, but stick till the end to see the goodness of these, both of these reviews or use the chapters below to skip through the video. While we're waiting for the sun to disappear, I wanted to remind you a few things you need to check before going out to take pictures of the stars. The first one is that you want to be sure that there's no clouds that block the stars. The second is that you want to make sure that the moon isn't too bright because if the moon is too bright, you won't see as well the stars. And the last one is that you want to be in a dark sky area. So if you want to learn more about any of these concepts, go check out my first video on sharp stars where I go in more depth about all of these. It's about two hours later right now. And like you can see, it's quite cold outside. Uh, that's why I have my hat and my glasses on to see the stars. And they're really bright tonight. So it's perfect to try uh, this out. And if we look right beside me here, I have my camera that's on a tripod and I have just a little plastic adapter here to hold it. And the tripod is really important for uh, this shot because the camera is going to need to be steady for a few seconds. So you need to be sure to have a tripod if you want to be taking stars uh, with the DJI Osmo Pocket. So if we come in here, we're going to open uh, the DJI Mimo app. And we're just going to wait that it connects to the camera. I have the wireless adapter right down here. So it should work wirelessly. So when we're now in the mode, we don't see much because uh, it's actually quite dark behind me here. Um, so if we come here, we're going to switch to the photo mode. Uh, we're then going to go in the settings here. For ISO for now, we're going to come back to it at the end. The first thing we're going to come here is go to our slowest shutter speed we can go. And in this case, it's eight seconds. So I would have liked something longer, usually around like 15 seconds is better. Uh, but here, eight seconds is our maximum. And then I'm going to go on the ISO and let's try ISO of the maximum, which is 3200. So here we don't really have too much choice. Uh, these are the maximums that are supported by uh, the camera. So we're going to use the maximum light we can have inside of it. And then we can just turn the camera. So I'm going to try and turn it a little bit. It's actually quite hard because we don't see anything at all right now. One thing that's kind of important is that you want to go instead of your pro settings, you're going to come here and then you're going to go on the pro menu. So if it's on basic, you want to come here on pro and you want to make sure that you have JPEG plus raw. So we have a raw file that we can edit afterwards. So now we have JPEG plus raw. At the white balance, I'm also going to change it to automatic um, because I don't want it on sunny. Uh, we're going to remove the glamour effect. Um, and we're going to put the focus mode on single so we can focus it once and it doesn't change afterwards. So now we're going to come back here. So I see a star right here. So it seemed to have focused on it. So now we're ready to take our first shot. So let's press the button and see how it goes. So now it's done. So if we come here on the preview mode, so we do see the foreground quite a lot. So I think we're going to need to move up the camera a little bit and Probably close the video light because it's creating too much light, but it's not bad for now. So that's definitely one thing I'm realizing right now. It's quite hard um, to get the camera right uh, because we don't really see uh, where it's pointing right now. So it's really trial and error, I guess, for uh, taking pictures of it. So I'm going to close the light right here, close this, and now I'm going to take the shot. Oh, so this one isn't bad. I just want it to be a little bit more uh, upwards. Okay, so after like testing 10, 15 test shots, I actually got one that is kind of okay. So I'm gonna open it up right here. So I have it here. So like you can see, we can actually see the stars quite well. Uh, the foreground is also quite nice here with um, the light that's coming in. 
but I think a big problem here is that there's a lot of noise and it's not as sharp at all like it's not a great picture and there's so much more noise in the background but I think if it's just a post that you're going to put on Instagram or something like that uh, I could actually work uh, okay um, so I just want to try now to download it and we're going to go see inside of Lightroom if we're able to edit it a little bit more and get more details out of it we're going to go and edit so is this oh so this is the JPEG so I might have to wait to get back home to edit the actual raw picture but let's just see here if we can bring out a little bit more detail even in the JPEG so if we bring up the exposure it's actually quite surprising how well it seems to be going bring up the whites a bit so I'm here I'm just trying to and I'm gonna bring the contrast up so I'm just adding a little bit more pop on the picture and on the stars by bringing up the exposure of the whole picture and also adding contrast to create a contrast between the stars and um, the background so I think I'm just gonna bring down the blacks a little bit just because they're the ones that has the most noise in it and I think that's not bad and like I said in all my videos the most important part is actually adding a layer mask to add some clarity so here we're going to come inside of selective edit and add a mask quickly like this then we're going to come inside of uh, details no this one here never sure what this tab is called and just bring out the um, clarity so yeah, this is actually not bad. It's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. Now let's just go back in detail here and we're gonna add quite a lot of noise reduction. Um, just because like we saw, the noise level was terrible inside of it. So let's go up to 50. And now if we look at this shot, it's actually a lot better. Like it's, this is a pretty good shot actually. I'm quite surprised that this JPEG, uh, how did it hold up to the edit here? And this is actually a pretty good shot, so I'm quite impressed um, with this capability of the DJI Osmo Pocket to take stars. Okay, so now I want to try a different technique with the DJI Osmo Pocket and for this one uh, we're going to try creating a time lapse. We're going to go back inside of the DJI Mimo app. We're going to come down here inside of time lapse and it's important that we go on time lapse mode, not hyperlapse. So hyperlapse is actually taking a video and condensing everything together. A time lapse is taking different pictures, but like we need the eight seconds that is available to take every single shot. Uh, we want to go inside of the time lapse mode. So now if we come inside of manual here, uh, our settings are already on ISO 3200, eight seconds. Um, then we're just going to go in advanced settings here. Uh, we're going to make sure that the format is JPEG plus video because having a JPEG is going to allow us to bring them inside of the computer and process them afterwards. So we're going to make sure we have this on. I'm going to leave light white balance to auto like before and uh, leave the focus mode on AFS. And we already did the focus before, so we won't have to change it. Like we have an eight second exposure for the picture. Um, here, the interval is going to be 10 seconds minimum. And we're just going to put, let's say, a 30 minute uh, timer uh, because it's getting quite close. I don't want to stay here for a full hour. And then we're going to create a path. So I'm actually just going to come here and this is going to be actually quite hard because I don't really know how I'm positioning the camera. So let's say something like this. I'm actually going to take for this a little trick. I'm going to take my headlamp, put this on and open it. So that now on our video feed, we can actually see what we're doing. So, oops. So here we have the dock in the foreground. I don't really want. So maybe a little bit higher. Okay, so now that the camera is set up, I'm actually gonna close the video light and press on record. And now we're just gonna have to wait half an hour uh, for the video to be created. The first time lap just completed and I'm gonna put it on screen right now. But as you see, the motion was way too fast. It's kind of hard to watch. So I decided to start another one hour time lapse and hoping this one's gonna be better.
this is pretty cool. So I'm going to play it again, but I'm actually quite surprised how much stars we can actually see in this. And this nice little movement is actually really cool uh, for the shot. So I'm actually quite surprised of the results we're getting with this for the time-lapse mode. Hey, it's Future Me that is back and I'm quickly going to go take some pictures and a time lapse with the DJI Pocket 2 and the Freewell light pollution filter because it's the first night where I'm supposed to have a perfectly clear sky but where there's clouds that come out of nowhere so I'm just going to go take them right now before it's too late. So my DJI Pocket 2 here is set up and ready to take the shot and there's a few things that were updated so there's a bigger sensor inside of DJI Pocket 2 there's a small brighter aperture and also a wider lens and the wider lens is what excites me the most because that means we're going to be getting more stars inside of the shot which was a problem with the original version where with the 26 millimeter equivalent lens we wouldn't get as many uh, picture, uh, stars inside of the shot Another great thing about this update is that you can now take raw pictures instead of having raw plus JPEG inside of photo mode. And also when taking a time lapse, you can get raw images that are higher resolution, which means you're going to get a lot more uh, possibilities inside of post-processing to get better results with the time lapses. While the Osmo Pocket is taking the time lapse, I wanted to talk a little bit about the light pollution filter. So Freewell did send this for me uh, for free but I'm not paid to make the video and you don't get to see it either. So you're gonna have my full honest opinion about it. But if it works, it actually should be blocking the spectrums of the city lights. So that's why it's a light pollution filter. So we shouldn't be getting that glow that we see at the bottom of the pictures uh, when we have a light pollution from a city center or something like that. So I'm pretty excited to see if it's gonna be working or not. And if we're gonna be, be getting brighter stars in the shot in the end or not, because this should help getting brighter stars, like we're not gonna be getting the light pollution as much inside of the shot. So let's see if it actually works or not. I just saw the results on my phone and I must say that the wide angle lens really does help get more stars inside of the shots. I must say that the photos are still pretty noisy but I'm hoping that with some post-processing we can actually make them look a little better. The most impressive result of the night is the light pollution filter. So it really got rid of the glow in the bottom of the pictures of the light pollution of my hometown Montreal. So this is really impressive how much it can help. And at only $20, I think it's really a no-brainer if you want to be taking pictures of the stars or video time lapses of the stars using the DJI Pocket 2. I'm going to put the link in the description down below if you want to purchase it. Here are my final thoughts. I don't think that the DJI Osmo Pocket or the DJI Pocket 2 take the best photos of the stars, but if you're ready to post-process them, you can definitely get some decent results. Where I think this little camera really exceeds is getting some time lapses. Combined with the light pollution filter, you can get some really good results with really some minimal efforts, which is pretty nice uh, when using this small camera. So if you want to get some time lapses, I would recommend it. But if you want to get some better pictures of the stars, I would maybe look at the Google Pixel 4a. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by liking the video below. Also consider subscribing by hitting that big red button. And then my next video is going to be on creating time lapses of the moving stars. See you in the next one. Bye bye.